Welcome along to the Make It Count podcast. This is our first official one doing it remote. And so we will have the video for it as well. Hopefully that will go off on YouTube. Um, I don't know why I said that out loud because now I'm committed to that. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to do an episode today, Matt. What are we going to do an episode on? We're going to do an episode looking back in time at our five-year journals because this year just passed so 2022 just finished and david and i have finished our first round through a five-year journal yeah and uh, we, a bit of a we, momentous moment for us yeah we've talked about five-year journals quite a lot and how that's yeah. been helpful for us in journaling uh we started august 2017 right 2018 was it 2018 yeah that makes yes. sense august 2018 so we did that end of 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, and 22. So we've done yes. it for about four and a half years. We both finished it, you know, December 31st this year. That's how it works. I'm filling out the bottom line. And so we thought, well, that's, that's four and a half, five years of journaling nearly. That's yeah. a completion point. We should reflect on what has come up for us. What are the benefits? What did we like? What did we discover? What did we discover doesn't work as well? And Absolutely. So, and before before uh, we move on, I think it's probably there, there will be at least someone out there going, hang on, why, why did they start in August? Well, the backstory there is this was when we were living on board Logos Hope, the ship traveling around Latin America. And we had got this idea from somewhere quite early on in the year 2018. And we'd ordered them. But anything getting there takes a long time to get to the ship. It has to get shipped to Germany and then gets put on a shipping container and then gets taken to wherever the ship actually was and then you get it so we ended up getting it middle august and that's yeah. when we started i think you because that we was weren't going to wait six months were we yeah so that was it we both heard about it as someone was saying you know this was a really good gateway into journaling it's just five lines anyone can do it it's really good so we were like yeah let's do it so you went and you ordered a couple but we were on the log us home I think we just went through a number of ports that didn't let us receive this container. So it was kind oh, of funny because yes. we'd be in a, in a port and the container wouldn't be allowed to come in. And so it was just sort of following us for like several months before eventually a port authority let us receive that container. We opened it up the next day we started. So I think I was on the 19th or the 20th of August. Yeah, I'm going to check just now quickly which one it was for me. But I Not think it was around day. that, the 20th, 20, 21st, 21st of August. Yeah. I, yeah. I started, I think, a day before you. But it's funny because I know my first entry was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it did not help me know what happened on that day, but I just wrote something. Yeah, interesting. I think my first my first entry was actually fairly good, but um, it wouldn't make sense for most people it just i ended up recording like all of loads of stuff that had been going on like with family bits and people traveling and some you know challenges and a book i was reading so yeah i well, tried to fit good. everything in. i think i tried to fit everything in oh, in right. a single day so yeah well it's good that it helped you remember because ultimately that's kind of it it's a memory prompt maybe or uh yeah so you remember what yeah. happened whereas i wrote mine and i just was like no, I have no memory formed of this day. I didn't. I obviously didn't capture the right moment, so I didn't do it in the right way. Right. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's what what I've found in terms of like looking back at previous years' entries. I don't always, maybe not not often, like get into the point where like oh, I can remember exactly how that day went. Mm. I can remember like moments from it, and specifically specifically the bits that I've recorded. Mm. But it's also just this capturing of like these were the thoughts i was having or this was the perspective i had right now and like looking back as a you know my older self looking back on my younger self looking and going oh wow i've just got a different perspective now i'm in a different place and so i can see that from a broader angle it's really interesting so yeah we we've sort of initially started what is one main insight you've had as you reflected on the, the five-year journal completion I, I think it's just a, a wonderful practice. This is for me, like this thing is one of my biggest treasures now because it's it's holds literally a treasury of memories. It holds my story over the last five years, mm. uh, which in a very small package, you know, it's, like, it's great. 
uh, and it definitely is one of my most treasured possessions because of that. It's obviously monetarily valuable at all. It's probably worth less than five pounds or maybe well, because it's been used, it's probably worth nothing to anyone else. So, <laughs> well, maybe, but, but also, you know, if you ever get married, you have kids, you have grandkids, they're going to look at that and they're going to look at, oh, we know everything that granddad did you know, through this five year day period, we know what he was thinking, what was important, what was going on. You know, <laughs> one of the most famous books in the world is the diary of Anne Frank, mm. who is just some nobody 14 year old, but documented through this period of their life. Yeah. And everyone's read it and it goes, Oh, is it so interesting to hear what mm. this regular person was feeling and thinking and processing in the midst of this like amazing moment in history or terrifying moment in history maybe yeah so don't at the moment it may feel invaluable in its like monetarily but i think it's invaluable is really valuable isn't it invaluable is like more than valuable anyway does it apart aside from that yeah no absolutely and so for me i just love that it's a treasure um and this year, the beginning of this year has been an odd one because I'm I kind of used to when I do my five year journal, like having the previous year's entries now. But now I'm on a new blank top line and the, I'm not having both of them, you know, an opening. I, you know, I just don't have that kind of effort at the moment. So maybe at some point I'll pick it out and, and have a bit more of an intentional just read through what was going on back then. But uh, at the moment, it feels like I'm in a fresh new block of five and the future is open sort of thing yeah well that was really interesting to me because i've written my journal what happens is i get in bed i lie down on my front and i get my journal and i start writing and i had a moment it was about a week ago and i uh, turned over the page i was like oh no i forgot to do it yesterday like uh and then i realized it was i'm on the top line i didn't miss any lines like <laughs> i hadn't forgotten it I'm on the top line again. It was so weird though to like turn over and see that and you know, oh, what did I do last year or four years yeah. ago? But yeah, I like yeah. genuinely like really shocked myself. I was like, oh no, I've forgotten to do a day. <laughs> yeah. No, that's brilliant. Uh, something that um was quite funny to me actually, uh, when I went to pick up this old one, uh to like have a quick flick through it and preparing for this episode. In the uh, in the class, I've discovered it's like a perfect place for a pen. Mm. Um, and I picked this one up and then I was just holding it. I was like, okay, there's something else. And I noticed, oh, the pen's missing. Hmm. And I, I spent a good five minutes looking around for my pen before I realized, oh, hang on. This is the old one. I no longer have the pen in this one. I've got the pen in the new one. <laughs> so just like small things like that, which, you know, just a funny moment, really. So one of the things, well, recently... <clears throat> And we were at my parents-in-law moving some of my wife's, Charlotte's stuff out. We were sorting through it and we were getting rid of some stuff and we were deciding what stuff to keep and move. And I'm not especially sentimental, but there are various like, memory triggers there. And Charlotte, she, she said to me, she said, David, like my memory isn't as good as your memory. And I was thinking, oh, that's quite interesting because I was like, maybe that's true. Maybe I have got a good memory, but I definitely think, and, and obviously memory works because you have a memory trigger of like, oh, this photo reminds me of this time or, you know, this thing, this ticket, whatever. But I was thinking probably one of the reasons why my memory is quite good is because I've written down something for every single day of the last pretty much five years okay. and the important thing. And so at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm already creating the memory. So I'm sitting there, I'm going, what do I want to remember from today? And I'm actively recalling it and I'm writing it down. And sometimes, you know, and I'm not always going back and reading what happened last year or last week or whatever, but actually it's forming that memory before I sleep and your memories are formed in your sleep. So it's the last thing I'm sort of thinking about when I go to bed that really solidifies that memory. So I wouldn't be surprised, not that I, this is verifiable, but if actually it has improved my memory because I've, I've tr and I've got better at it, of finding that moment of change or the most important moment of the day. I used to 
maybe write down what most people will probably do. It's just sort of like chronology of what happened through the day. Oh, you know, I woke up and I went and did this and then I went and did that and then I did this. But now it's more like, oh, just stop for a moment. What is the thing that happened today that made today not like any other day? Uh, what was it that stood out to me? And that helps form it into a, oh, yeah, this happened. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then I tell that story. And then, uh, you know, when I'm with people, I tell that story and then I recount it to, you know, all sorts. And then that becomes a story that I've lived and I remember and that other people wouldn't even notice. Yeah, I like that. And I think it's important as well to anyone that's maybe hearing that and going, wow, like every day has to be this completely unique thing. No, like there are genuinely plenty of times when you kind of go, wow, today was a fairly mundane day. Not an awful lot happened. Mm. So you maybe pick up on a couple of the key points. I definitely steer away from like doing an itinerary of what were the meals that I had today and those sort of things. Unless Uh, it was like a really special meal. Yeah. 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 You want to, you want to pick up on, I think that question you said, right. What is it that you want to remember from today? That's just a really helpful rubric. And if you want to remember what you, you know, you ate great because that's what you want to remember so do that but if you don't want to remember that you want to remember maybe what was a meaningful conversation or what was a new idea mm. or yeah one that i always find difficult but I, I i like it but i find it difficult it's kind of like what was the the story moment of the day or what was something you know a, a standout story mm. uh, and maybe i haven't trained my eyes to see them as or or even just recognized yeah like oh that counts as an interesting little story it doesn't have to be some big thing yeah, uh, but well, yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with just going. You know, this was how today was. These were the key points through the day, and this was generally my mood. That's okay, you know. Uh, just getting into the habit of writing because you're still you're still going through that process of thinking through the day, reviewing through it, which is valuable in and of itself. Yeah, and it's like you said, like what is the thing you want to remember? And sometimes I've had things that have happened that have been quite significant, but I don't want to remember, so I don't write them down. I don't know if that's dishonest or like disingenuine or, you know, like I'm whitewashing my past. <laughs> I just, I just, I, yeah, nobody else will remember it and I won't remember it either. Um, but yeah. I think that's a gift though, isn't it? Because there are definitely aspects of, there are things that are maybe, well, yeah, it's a good thing to forget stuff. Like there are, there are definitely some people that remember loads and loads. And I think there even can be, it can be disabilitating if you remember too much. Mm. You remember all this useless information or like this stuff in too much detail. Like, actually, we're not really capable of dealing with that. So there's a gift in, in forgetting. So there's a there's a guy called Matthew Dix. He's written a book called Story Worthy. He has performed in um, The Moth, which is a storytelling organization uh, where they get like 10 storytellers up to tell like five to eight minute stories. And every time they vote, and if you win that, you get through to the Grand Slam. And he's won multiple of those. So, you know, he's he's a competitive storyteller, very good at it, written books about it, even done, I think, two, maybe three TED Talks on storytelling as well. One of which is called Homework for Life. And that's this idea that for 100 days, write down one thing that happened today that you that might you might eventually be able to tell a story about something that was a moment of change, something that was interesting, some some moment of connection. And like you said, it can be a little thing. And I think that's a, that's kind of what we've been doing without realizing it. These moments, you know, not just for 100 days, but for, well, I mean, how many, how many days is four and a half years? Nearly a thousand? Well, over a thousand. Yeah. Three, uh, three years is um, a just over a thousand. Yeah. So, so four years is like 1,300, 1,400. So you've got all of these moments in your life that you've captured and caught and that they're in you. And maybe you don't, so, I mean, you do a better job of going back and, and looking at it. I think after I did um, year two, I thought, oh, it's, you know, end of the year, like December, end of December. I was like, I should just read through like everything I've done for, you know, everything I've written for that last year. Yeah. It took me flipping ages, like so long. I got halfway through and I'm like, I'm so drained. And I was like, <laughs> you must do it. You know, we think, well, it takes five lines, but actually if every entry takes a minute, 
two minutes. That's six hours worth of reading. Yeah, that's a lot of reading. Yeah, yeah. even the people that do like a uh, you know a one second video every every day, you know, yeah. or like a one you know that's like a six minute video or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so it's like let alone reading six hours. So I didn't do that. So I got out of the habit of doing that at all. Um, <laughs> it was just such a negative experience. But so many other things went into me and are inside me. Um, mm. But that 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 I like that idea of like capturing the story, the moment of change, the moment of connection, the the, the interesting thing, the high emotion or the low emotion, those sorts of moments more so than today I went and did this. It's like, well, yeah, mm. that was interesting. But actually, the other day we went into we just moved house um, and we walked around and we went into our local one stop, which is like a little corner shop, and we're just looking around. And the guy was like, oh, are you like new to the area? It's like, yeah, we only moved here like three days ago. He's like, ah, oh, it's so good to be here. Like, you're so welcome. Come along anytime. We'll help you anytime. Mm. Um, people around here are so friendly. And he was he was big and he was smiley and he was genuinely friendly. And it's like, huh, I've never been welcomed into a shop like this before. Not in England anyway. And That's it was just fantastic. this moment of just like, I was almost like overwhelmed with like, this is crazy because when you move house and you move into a new area, there's like, what have we done? Like, you know, yeah. I, I knew it a little bit. I spent a lot of money. But then when someone you totally don't know is so friendly, so welcoming, so smiley, you're mm. just like, oh, wow, this is this is really nice. And it, it's a small moment in the day, but I'll probably never forget that now. Nice. So I'm guessing then the whole point of that is you you recorded that down as a little story. Yeah. <laughs> How did you compress that into six lines? very friendly welcome at one stop <laughs> brilliant this evening brilliant. you know because it's 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 not writing the story out it's the the trigger the moment the you know later i might you know write out the whole story that's not for everyone but it's it's there inside me now mm. yeah i like that what are um looking back at the sort of the five years and the the practice of it what are some things that you you maybe would do differently? I think I would focus on that earlier. Like, and maybe there's a bit of grace to think like, you know, at the beginning, you never do it your best. So yeah. <laughs> you, you learn what is important. And sometimes it was just about doing it. I, I was thinking there were times we were on the Logos Hope and I was doing shift work. And so sometimes you would work from like midnight till eight o'clock in the morning. And I was never sure when I should write my journal. Do I do it before the shift? Like when the night is like night or do I do it when my shift is finished at like eight o'clock in the morning or after I've had breakfast. So like 10 o'clock in the morning, because that's when I'm going to go to sleep. (laughs) And, And you know, when you do international travel, it's a bit confusing as well of like, well, I've just gone across a load of time zones and, when is the night? So I basically, I've always kept in mind, it's the thing I do before I sleep. Yeah. So whenever, you know, that that's the trigger. Like I'm in bed, I'm about to go to sleep. I write what has just happened previously. But it sometimes means you're doing this exhausted. You're so yeah. tired. You don't have the time to think like, what happened today? What was the most meaningful moment? No, any chance, no chance of doing that. It's just write something. Because, yeah. you know, it keeps you in the habit, keeps you in the streak. And if today was not a perfect journaling day, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Yeah. What about you? What would you do differently? Well, just riffing on that for it before I, I said, I think that's quite interesting. And maybe this this might tie in because there are absolutely there are days when you just get there and you're like, uh, like either you've just completely wiped out from the day or maybe you've sometimes got like a headache and just like thinking is hard. Um, and so there have been sometimes I'm like, you know what, I just can't write anything, so I'll, I'll write it tomorrow. And the best time for me to do that then, if I do, is to do it in the morning before I do anything else. And I wonder how, you know, like we have got into the habit of doing it at the end of the day, looking back. But there's nothing to say you can't do this at the beginning of the day. Um, and, and well, go, I'm going to push on that a little bit. Before. I'm going to push on that a little bit because Matthew Dix talked about this and he said, yeah, do what works for you. You know, some people say, you know, for life situations, it's really difficult to do it last thing in the night. I'm really tired. 
but he was like there's something that happens in the sleep that sort of wipes it forms or it wipes we know that part of sleep's job is to like basically form memories but wipe out the memories as well and so it, his opinion is do it on the day because you might lose it you know you might have lost some of the most meaningful moments because you didn't do it on the day but he says it doesn't have to be at the end of the day for yeah. him for his homework for life it might have just happened you know you were just at this lunch and this thing happened get your phone out and write it down you know yeah. he says, there's no rules for this you can do it at any point during the day but for him it's like actually probably before you sleep like any time before you sleep but like don't wait till the next day if you can help it so but yeah i appreciate yeah. that it's better to do no, it I than not that. do it but i i also think for me i'm really happy i've always done it before i've gone to sleep interesting yeah and so sometimes that might mean actually you go well if i'm already feeling tired and i'm you know maybe going to go to bed in a bit actually take out 10 minutes and do the journal then chances are you know not much else is going to happen in the day and if somebody does great leave a line you know yeah. <laughs> well yeah that was why it's funny i was um i think i've had a few people say this to me but charlotte said this one time when she first started last year so she's on her second year now yeah. she's like only five lines like i can't fit everything in it and i said well sometimes you'll be like five lines feels like so much and you'll only write three and yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think she didn't believe me until <laughs> until it did happen where you know sometimes five lines feels like a lot and it just yeah. has to be comfortable with the fact that you've written only three or only four lines and that's okay because it's not about filling out the lines but it is about writing something absolutely i love that i love that so looking ahead i mean because we're we're getting on in the, the episode now looking ahead next five years is there anything that you know you want to make sure that you do moving forwards yeah i mean that i think it's coming across really strong as i've even heard myself rambling about various parts but it's really it's capturing the moment that change that story it's not about doing an itinerary or everything but was there a moment that was significant today oh mm. the, you know whatever it was what about you yeah, I, I absolutely. That's that. This has been a reminder to like capture the most important thing that I want to remember. And maybe whether it was it an emotion, was it a new a new thought, or was it a, a meaningful moment and story? Mm. Um, a couple of tips I would say um, if you want to help, just capture a bit of the scenery. Something I started doing fairly early on, um, and it worked a lot when we were on the ship traveling around. But was just on the first line at the beginning part of the line. You just write, where are you? You know, wh where are you coming from? So at the beginning, that just became like whatever port we were in in the country. Um, the last couple of years, it's been maybe a little bit more uh, the same, you know, just like I'm still in the UK, still in Kent. But it does help when you go, like, oh, yeah, actually, I traveled over to that city that today or I traveled back or something. And that always helps because it provides a little bit of context. Yeah. Well, there was I saw someone say, if you're ever <clears throat> stuck for what to write, they'd read this tip that you should write the title and the date on your page really slowly and really beautifully because that gives your brain time to write something and i didn't realize this until you've just said it but every day i've written down you know what town and country i'm in and even what day of the week it is because next year this day of the week or this date is going to be a different day of the week yes so that's helpful that's something i've added recently but it just in writing that i've started writing and then it's easier to carry on writing once you start yeah. writing yeah it's no than longer a blank dive, page exactly rather than trying to dive straight into it so great tip matt one more i like tip. that i'm gonna start i'm gonna start making it more arty because mine i look at this and it's like hieroglyphics dude <laughs> <laughs> well I think we're going to wrap up this episode, this first remote episode of the Make It Count podcast. We really enjoy this. Let us know how it sounds as well. We're obviously trying a few different bits and bobs, so hopefully it sounds okay. Um, and this should make it easier in the future to get some guests on uh, and yeah. to do that as well. So, uh, yeah, let us know what questions and comments you have. We always love hearing from you guys. Ciao, guys. <laughs>